Hello, I'm delighted to be here at the Spanish Heart of Dublin at Instituto Cervantes to meet Raymond Blake. Raymond Blake is the wine editor of the magazine Food and Wine, and he has just came back from Galicia, where he has been enjoying uh, their wines. Hello, welcome Hi. to Instituto Cervantes. Thank you very much. How are you? Thank you. I think it was your second time in Galicia. That's so, right. So, yes. uh, did you did you notice any special changes in the last year? I mean, culturally speaking, and in the, on on terms of wines. Well, in the wines, I think there's there's now a much greater uh, range of wines available. You know, which I think is is uh, important, and the the style I think I think has. Uh, there's a greater variety in, of styles as well, and because of the structure of the trip this time, we, as you know, we visited three distinct uh, regions. We're able to see differences, mm -hmm. whether it was closer to the sea or more inland, and, and so forth. So it was, it was nice to see that. I mean, Albarino is really, I think it's it's coming on all the time, you know, mm -hmm. as, as as a great variety. And now a tough question: uh, Would you choose 100% Albarino or Albarino blended? Would I think I'd choose 100% Albarino. Yeah, um, th there were some some blends we tried, which certainly, you know, as standalone wines were, were impressive. But uh, it it doesn't it, it doesn't really need that. I don't think. You know, mm -hmm. I think it it can stand alone on its own, and uh, it can make a very very pleasant wine, particularly to go with seafood or as as an aperitif. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's very it's a very interesting wine like that. Okay, and. Uh how would you describe Albariño? I mean, in three words, what stands out? Three words. Um, <laughs> light, fresh, and interesting. Interesting. Okay, so that's a, that's a very interesting definition for a white wine. Um, which will be your favorite occasion to have Albariño? You have told us that as an aperitif, it's a good choice. But is there other way to, to drink Albariño? Yeah, yeah. I think... Uh, yes, as an aperitif, certainly, um, because I think that it, it has a, Albarino has a nice bit of distinction. It's not it's not um, a hugely complex wine or very strong in flavour, but it's got that lovely pure crisp acidity. Mm -hmm. It's not too high in alcohol, and uh, yes, certainly as an aperitif. But then, with almost any type of seafood, I mm -hmm. would think of it, and particularly here in Ireland, uh, where we have so much seafood. Yeah. I mean, Galicia is almost like. It's, it's, it's very Celtic, it's very similar to the west of Ireland, and a huge amount of seafood there as well. And I would suggest with almost any of our seafoods, uh, it, would, it, would be, um, it would be a great match. Particularly, I think, shellfish, you know. Mm -hmm. So you, you had also some experience in the gastronomic point of view there in Galicia, as, as you're saying. Did you have also some opportunity to see something from the cultural point of view of Galicia? Yeah. Does it remind you some Celtic links together or...? Yeah. Well, the the, the standout uh, cultural um, uh, experience was was the cathedral at Santiago de Compostela, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of Irish people would, would be familiar with that, obviously having done the the pilgrimage, the the Camino. Uh, that that really just it, it, it stood alone, and we we got to walk on the the cathedral roof and everything. It was it was a magnificent experience, I mm -hmm. have to say, and the whole. Uh, town itself of Santiago is, is fantastic. Uh, on a completely different, uh, completely different thing. Um, the actual just driving along the coastline is fantastic. Mm. I mean, just as an experience mm. to drive along the coastline, um, it, it's it's magnificent to see. It's, as I say, it's very similar to to the, the the rugged coastline you get in the west of Ireland. So I think for Irish people visiting, I think it could be um, almost a home from home. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. But it, it's an ancient, ancient. It's an old region with loads of tradition and so on. But Albariño is just 25 years old. Yeah. Uh, what's what's the, 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 the what's behind that? I mean, is it a young wine? Does it have traditions? What's the? It, it, it is it is a very new uh, wine region and and uh, denomination, as you say yourself there. And I think it's um, my thinking about it is that. It, Maybe it, it lived for too long in the shadow of what people think mm -hmm. of the stereotype of Spain. You know, be it the you know the high central plain, mm -hmm. uh, Rioja, sort of mm -hmm. distant, dusty horizons and that sort of thing. I mean, it is completely different from that, and it still perhaps lives in the in that shadow mm -hmm. where um, you know there's an awful lot of Irish people visit Spain, but they don't go to Galicia. Uh, they, they don't. It, it's not on their map, not on their radar, you might say. Mm -hmm. But it, I think it deserves to be. And if you want something different, if you've had loads of Rioja or, or, or Ribera del Duero or, or mm -hmm. whatever it might be, um, this is distinctly different. And I think it's probably just beginning to, 
to come out of that shadow. You yeah. Know? yeah, yes, I heard that it's quite trendy now in the US, no? so, so the yeah. trend is coming along here yeah. in Ireland as well. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. right, yeah. So thank you very much, Raymond, okay. for yeah. all your inputs and see you in Galicia next yes. time. Yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> thank you.